Hey YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here. And if you watched my video yesterday, you saw that I was using the Rothko Medium Transport Pack. This one right here. So what I want to do is give you a bit of a review on some of the features that I like, some of them that I don't like, and um, we'll take it from there. Now first of all, I want to say that this pack does not come with these two canteen pouches. I've added them in through the molly webbing on the sides. So for the dimensions, it is 17 inches tall by 10 inches wide at the back, like it narrows in a little bit towards the front pouches, but 10 inches wide at the back and about 9 inches deep. So it's a 20 liter pack. It has all the pockets you'd expect on the back. It's got a, a deep insulated pocket for a hydration bladder. The main compartment is quite large and has uh, pockets inside it. And then there's a medium compartment here, which is a little less than half the size of the main compartment. And then you've got two pockets on the front. A fair size one here and a smaller one up here. Now the um, the zippers, let me just zoom in on the zippers for a second. As you can see, the zippers are really quite large. Um, so even if you had gloves or winter mittens on, it would be easy to pull on those toggles. Of course, you can always extend those toggles with a piece of paracord as well. But anyway, the, the zipper construction itself is quite large. It has large teeth, and it's one of those self-repairing types of, of um, zippers. Anyway, it's double stitched throughout, and the nylon is a real heavy uh, Cordura type nylon, so it's not going to rip. It has cinch straps on the side, on the left and the right side, or the left, the right and the left side. And it's Molly compatible, so it's, it's got Molly webbing throughout, Molly webbing on the sides, that's where I attach my canteens. Now to take a look at the straps. Okay, so it has padded shoulder straps, as you can see there, and these have molly webbing on them as well. I've got a whistle here. Um, and there, it also comes equipped with a sternum strap. Now the thing I didn't like about the straps is that they are kind of short. Now I'm a small guy. I'm only like 5'6", uh, 160 pounds. And, um, you know, there's there's not a whole lot of give to these straps. Now the other thing I didn't like about the straps was the waistband. As you can see, that's not very big. And it's also let out to as far as it goes. The other thing is that the straps can come off on the sides. There's a little buckle here. Let me just zoom in on that. There's a little buckle here where you could actually remove the belt completely. Now, what I found with the belt was that when you put it to its maximum size and then you just pulled a little bit on the, the belt itself, it would just slip right through the little buckle there. So anyway, that wasn't a very good design. So what I decided to do was put a couple of rows of stitches right in the belt to keep it from coming apart. I'll just zoom into that to show you. Right there, you can see the two rows of stitches that I put in. Now, because it's webbing, it's very easy to put stitches in by hand. So, all in all, the pack performed well when I had it out in the bush yesterday. Um, it was big enough. Um, the, the waist straps didn't come apart. And um, it was comfortable to wear. Now, the one thing that I did notice, though, when I was climbing up and down that hill was that one of the shoulder straps let go. 
again, it's um, passed through a couple of rings. And if you were to pull hard enough on it, watch this. I'll just zoom in. So if you were to pull hard enough on this, you can see that it's going to let go. And there, it just let go. So it wasn't the weight of the pack that actually caused that strap to come undone. It was just when I kind of hopped off of the, uh, the embankment down onto the shore, the extra g-forces of the pack going down pulled one of the straps loose. So I'm definitely going to sew that in place. And then it won't come off either. So I guess the idea behind the removable straps is that you can use this as a piece of luggage instead because it's got a, a nice sturdy carry handle on the top. Now, something else I noticed about this pack was that underneath where you typically put a tent or sleeping bag, there's not a whole lot of room there. And these, again, they're, they're stretched right out to their limits. But there are some molly loops here. Move this out of the way. There's some molly loops here, one here and one on the other side. Right here. That you could put in, you know, a larger um, a larger sleeping bag or tent. And up here, right off the handle, there's a loop that you can put a carabiner in there, and another one on the other side. And then there's also an elasticized loop here in the top. I don't know what that's for. But anyway, what I did yesterday was I put a carabiner in the side onto a piece of cordage that then held my shovel that was uh, on my side. Now, let's talk about price. Now, with Rothko, if you go with the camo versions, like this is a multi-cam type of uh, color, you actually pay more and sometimes it's significantly more. So uh, the base price for this 20 liter uh, pack at Rothko is, let me just, I just wrote it down here on a slip of paper. Huh. Okay, so for the multicam version on the Rothko website, it costs 133.99 US, plus shipping of course. So, you know, they'd be like $25, $30 worth of shipping to get it here from the States. And um, our dollar right now is rather weak. So that $133.99 would probably be closer to $150, $160 easy, plus another $25 or $30 on top of that. Now, if you go through Amazon, you can get them a bit cheaper. Um, the solid color ones start at $52.99. And they're $22.43 for shipping. And these are Canadian funds, by the way. Um, so, and oh yeah, and then if you go to the camo versions, you know, they can be up there to over $100 plus shipping. So, um, it's, a, it's a little pricey. Yeah. So now, I think it's just fair that I say that this bag, or one practically identical to it, is available at a much less expensive price. Of course, it's in China. If you go to banggood.com, you can get this multicam bag for under $37 Canadian, and that's with free shipping. Now, we all know shipping's not free, so out of that $37, there's about $24 worth of shipping included. You know, so you're getting a bag for like $13, $14, which is yeah, well, it's crazy, you know. There's no way that here in North America we can compete with that kind of stuff. So it's understandable why so much, um, so much manufacturing has gone over to China, just because they do it for nothing. Well, practically nothing. So that is my review of this bag. Um, right after this video, I'm going to go and stitch these top straps in place so that they never come undone again. And, uh, yeah, it's great for a day pack. Uh, you wouldn't be able to, 
you know, do an overnighter in it unless you strapped a tent to it or strapped a hammock to it or or something like that. It's it's pretty basic. Um, the other bags that I have that I, I do camp with, they're they're basically they're just computer bags, but they're significantly larger. Like my uh, my Dell bag, for example, it's made to hold up to a 17-inch laptop, and um, it is quite roomy. So if this is 20 liters, that Dell bag's got to be 30 liters. And um, anyway, so this bag, when I bought it, it was smaller than I was expecting. I was expecting something a little bit bigger. So um, high on my priorities, I guess, is um, getting a good larger bag for camping, doing overnighters and multiple night outs. Well, I guess that's about it. So until next time, this is Muskrat Jim, signing out. For more muskrat survival videos, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.